So I don't know exactly who this video is for, which is probably the worst thing you could say at the start of a YouTube video, but hear me out for like 30 seconds because it might really help you out. These are thoughts that I've had in my head now for a couple of years and I really want to just get them out onto the internet because I think it might help people that were where I was four or five years ago before I started all of this, all this Amazon stuff, all this YouTube stuff. Uh, and maybe you weren't in a place or you aren't in a place in your life where you thought you would be or where you wanted to be. Who this video probably isn't for is for people who were told you're never going to make it. And you use that hunger and that, that use that as motivation to achieve big things and you've done really well in life. If that's you, congratulations. But this video isn't necessarily for you. Who it's for is for people who were told you're going to do fine. Like you're going to do well even. Perhaps when you were at school, you, you, know, you were in top sets. Maybe you weren't the top of the top sets that you're doing really well. Uh, perhaps you were, I don't know, good at sport. You had a bunch of friends. You didn't need much guidance and much help. And you were just told that you're going to be fine in life. And you believed them, right? And you set some pretty high expectations. But now you're in your 20s, you're in your 30s, you're in your 40s, and you're not where you wanted to be. And I wanted to make this because I was there and I've changed it now. So I want to tell my story. And hopefully it helps a couple of you watching to make the changes that you need to do to take your life to where it should be. So when I was about 11, I realized that the dream of every British kid of being a professional footballer, it probably wasn't going to happen. I wasn't quite that good. So I changed my goal to money. I was dead set in love with cash. So I was that kid at school that was selling sweets, uh, drinks. So sweets are candy, by the way, to the people in the US watching. Uh, DVDs are sold for a bit cigarettes if I'd go on holiday and come back with cigarettes I would sell everything I'd also keep I'd keep books right so I'd be tracking who owes me money how much I'd made that week and it really got me hooked on cash and making money in my last year at school I got voted most likely to make a million pound and I believed it and I was like right, I'm definitely going to do this this is going to be easy and a bunch of my family and family friends they all saw me doing this and they all said the same thing so they all drilled it into me you're going to be fine you're going to do really well you're gonna make a bunch of money. So I kind of thought it was a foregone conclusion that that was gonna happen. When I got to sixth form, which is 16, 17, 18, leveled up a little bit and started importing clothes from China. Now, it turns out a lot of these clothes were just stolen, uh, which wasn't ideal because eBay then booted us off, but we were selling them to our friends at college, uh, eBay, Bebo, for those of you that remember that. So this started going pretty well. And I was like, right, by the time I'm 20, I'm gonna be a millionaire it's definitely going to happen. So I spoke to my, I guess you call it like a guidance counselor uh, when you're that age about university. And I said, look, I don't even need to go. Like it's, I'm, I'm set. I've got the skills. I love business. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to be a millionaire in two years. And the guy said, yeah. Um, he said, yeah, don't, don't even bother replying, which looking back, not, not the best teacher I ever had perhaps, but you know, at that point I really believed it. So I graduated and I left education and the idea didn't come yet. But I was like, right, I need to give myself time to think. Perhaps I should change my surroundings. So I went off and I moved to France. I went to France for five or six months, did a ski season. And I was a, a chalet host, cooking and cleaning chalets, right? And when you do that, you have a bunch of time to sit on ski lifts. And I thought, right, I'm going to have so much time to think. The idea is going to come to me and I'm going to sit there and this is going to happen. And I'm going to return home and make a bunch of money. What actually happened was I ended up Loving the season. I highly recommend anyone does a ski season if you're into that kind of thing. You end up boozing lows, which was, was great, but I didn't really have any ideas. And I went home with nothing, basically. And I started working again. I started scraping some money together. I thought, right, I need to go away again. That, that didn't work. But this time, what if I go to Australia? So then at 19 years old, myself and a few mates, we moved to Australia. And I thought, right, I'm definitely going to crack it this time. I bounced some ideas off my friends and we're going to work it out. I spent nine months or so, Australia, New Zealand. And again, I didn't find the idea. It didn't come to me. And most people, when you go traveling, you kind of do it to like find yourself is a kind of a bit of a cliche. I didn't need to do that, right? I th I'd already found myself. I thought, I was like, I'm the guy who's going to make a load of money. Like this is going to happen. I don't need to find myself. I don't need to look internally. I already know this is what I want to do. But then I returned home. And the idea didn't come again. And at that point, I was like, well, I actually really enjoy life experiences. I like traveling. And the, the, the drive I had for making money and being a millionaire by 20. And at this point, by the way, I was also 20 and I hadn't done it yet. 
it kind of went out and it got a bit distinguished. And I ended up just getting a job in a bar for a bit. Then I did a bit of laboring, like manual manual labor, which was which was absolute graft. It was tough. Then I got a job in sales. I was selling uh, advertising in a magazine, right, in, in my hometown. And I was getting paid £14,000 a year. Now, £14,000 a year, if you earn that for 71 years, you can make a million quid. And I realized that and I thought, fuck, like, I'm so far from where I should have been at this point. And I really felt like I'd let everyone down. I felt like I let myself down where I didn't hit that million by 20. And I let my family down. I let my kind of family friends down. Of course, nobody was giving me shit about having a job working in sales, but I felt bad about myself. And I felt like I really hadn't achieved much. Looking back, obviously, look, I was 20, 21 years old. I probably shouldn't have been that hard on myself, but I really felt like I'd failed. So fast forward a couple of years, right? And I'd done all right in the sales job and I moved into a different sales job. And that was arranging bachelor parties. So I would arrange, they're called Stag and Hen Weekends in the UK. I'd arrange them all around Europe, right? And part of that job, you go and research the destination. So as a 22, 23 year old, a pretty good job, right? You're going off for the weekend. You're basically doing fake stag dudes with the local kind of guides and you're researching places around Europe and you're selling and arranging kind of fun, fun parties. So a decent job. Again, the pay was okay. I was earning a little bit more, but nothing great, right? But that job took me to Barcelona and I came to Barcelona for a research trip and I met the ground agent we had here. And this guy was uh, what I'd say is a proper entrepreneur, right? He had so many schemes he'd tell me about. Like we really hit it off. Tell me about all these jobs that he'd, uh, sorry, all these ideas that he'd done, all these businesses that he'd ran since moving to Spain, but also when he was a kid as well. And obviously I was telling him what I used to do uh, and we just really got on. So I thought, right, I need to get to Barcelona. I need to be around people like that. And this is a bit of a side note, but that is one tip I would say to anyone watching this who is entrepreneurial, anyone who's a bit younger in particular. If you're entrepreneurial and you live in a little town, so for my, my case, I lived in a place called Bath in England, not tiny, but maybe 90,000 people. It's not exactly a hub of entrepreneur. And I think a lot of you guys watching will probably live in way smaller places than that. The spark isn't going to find you there, right? You need to put yourself where the action is, get around it. You might not do the exact thing that someone else is doing, but being around a buzz, being around a big city is, in my opinion, completely essential uh, when you're younger and you want to get into business. So I figured if I can get to Barcelona and be around that guy, because I knew we, we got on and it was going well with, with the work and sending them a lot of business, I knew maybe something would come up and he'd probably support my idea. So I got myself to Barcelona. I was thinking, I didn't have any ideas at this point, but I was thinking, right, if I get there, maybe something will happen and the fire will come back because I've really felt like I just lost I'd lost that drive to make money and it was killing me so I moved here I'm still here now and I settled into this tourism industry right which was fun for a, for a while uh incredibly stressful industry to be in and I was earning pretty good money I was earning good money compared to my friends here which actually was a little bit dangerous because I, I had it a kind of ceiling on what I thought was good but my life was pretty fun and I thought okay like mid mid 20s I'm going to enjoy it and the chance to itch my entrepreneurial scratch, it came up. It actually came up about a year in, right? Ended up opening an activity center with my boss and two other guys that we worked with. So this was like an inflatable game center. Think, uh, think like Total Wipeout or Takeshi's Castle, which obviously seems like super fun. It was really fun when it went well, but again, like incredibly stressful, not the best business model in terms of you can't really scale it past the capacity of the, the venue. And it was unbelievably stressful. So I'm working Monday to Friday and then essentially working all weekend as well. So seven days a week, I did a lot of the sales and arranging the events. So my phone just never stopped ringing. This went on for two, three, four years. We ran that business and didn't make any money out of it, basically. And it was super stressful. I learned a lot, probably a lot of things that you shouldn't do. And I kind of thought, right, business, you know, it's pretty hard. I thought I had a good idea here but I didn't really have any other ideas. So I was like, right, I've got to make this one work. So we kind of toiled away at that business for quite a long time, trying to kind of tinker with it, trying to put more volume through it. Maybe we could expand and get a bigger site. But it was just so fucking stressful, man. Like, I really <laughs> wouldn't recommend um, tourism to anyone in particular. But I kind of figured that was my life. And I was like, right, I guess I'm in tourism now. I'm moving into my late 20s. I can probably earn 100K a year, maybe 200K. 
we actually started looking at um, a, a cooking school was a second idea we had uh, because the guy I worked for, he already had one. I found a new venue and I thought, right, what if I go in with him on this? Perhaps this would be another good option. But it just meant I was shackled to tourism. You're shackled to spending your whole summers. You can't leave. You can't leave a city where tourism is kind of the lifeblood of it. You need to be here all summer. And that isn't a life that I wanted, but it felt like it was a life that I, I'd done, right? And no one I knew at that point was making a lot of money. I didn't actually know any millionaires. And I started to convince myself, I guess, you know, how many people really earn millions? Like, it, it can't be that many. I didn't know any, so probably... Not probably not really that achievable for most people. So maybe my dreams when I was younger, they were just pipe dreams and that was a bit stupid. And I suppose that is the reason I wanted to make this video because that situation that I was in is fucking dangerous. And it's probably where a lot of you watching this are now. Like I said, you were probably good at school. You were probably told you were gonna do well. You probably had big dreams when you came out of education. You got offered a decent job, nothing that you loved, and you took it, and then maybe you took on, I don't know, a mortgage, you might have bought a house, maybe you got a wife and kids. And to be honest, you just settled, right? And you thought those dreams you had, again, they were just a bit stupid, they were just dreams, and it's not really achievable. But you shouldn't have done that. I wanna tell you that in, in black and white, you shouldn't do that, and there's a way to change it still now. If you had that desire inside of you, if you were like super entrepreneurial as a kid, there's a reason you had that fire, and there's a reason that people told you that you were gonna do well. I don't think that's thrown around that lightly. I think some people, they spot it in people, right? And these people that are a bit wiser than us, they're a bit older, they spot these things and they're giving you that encouragement, but it's very easy for people to fall by the wayside and settle into a like, regular life. And just because you didn't yet find the thing that you're really good at, that you're exceptional at, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna find it. You just need to give yourself the bandwidth to keep trying things and keep consuming content and keep getting new ideas and being around people doing interesting things. And you will find that thing that you're amazing at and that reignites the fire that you had when you were younger, that entrepreneurial spirit that you thought that it was just gone and part of that was just another part of your life. You can get that back. I think the best way to do that, in my opinion, is like I said, get around people, right? Get around entrepreneurs, network online. If you're a bit rural at the moment, just network online with other people, get talking to people. Consume content like this, right? Just keep your ears to the ground and keep your eyes open and you will find an opportunity. In my case, I think I increased my surface area for good luck by being in Barcelona. And in my case, a massive stroke of good luck was COVID. So just prior to COVID, myself and Alex had started chatting about Amazon FBA, right? So he'd already launched a product in Spain and he knew that I had the, the inflatable games business, right? So out of our group of friends, we were kind of the only two people who were really interested in making money. And we used to meet up and we'd talk about it, talk about his business, talk about my business. And some of you guys would have seen this on kind of interviews and stuff we've done. Like one day we kind of came to an agreement where like I could invest in the business and we'd partner up. So late 2019, this was all kind of in action. But I was thinking, no, this will just be like a bit of a bit of a side hustle. It seems pretty fun, but obviously I'm going to keep doing my tourism thing and maybe do this this like cooking school idea we had, or like you know increase the inflatable games business. So I didn't really give it much attention, but we had started cooking up a few ideas. Then COVID hits, and it was probably the biggest blessing in disguise that's honestly ever happened in my life. And the reason for that is because it allowed me just to consume an incredible amount of Amazon FBA content in a really short period of time. And I got incredibly excited about it because it was the first time in years I could see a business opportunity that had a clear path in my eyes to six, seven, eight figures. And I knew this was way more intriguing for me. It like lit a fire basically beneath me again where I thought this is what I wanna do. This is exciting me. I don't wanna go back to what I was doing and I don't have to go back. I just need to make this work. So what I did a few months in, I kind of went, I went all in. I'm not saying this is for everyone, but I basically quit my job. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to go back. Now, thankfully, I had a bit of money saved up. So I would definitely not recommend quitting your job if you don't have any money saved up. I had a little bit, I had like a year or two savings that I could dip into. But getting into this and going all in, it just completely got me going. And the feeling of quitting your job, like having that realization, I made a promise to myself that I was never, ever going to work for anyone ever again. And look, so far, it's true. I'm gonna to stick to it, hopefully, I've got you know, a fairly long life to live still, but it's an incredible feeling. And it's something that if it's what you wanna do at some point in your life, if you could bottle the feeling that you have when you make that decision and sell it, 
I mean, if I could do that, I'd be a billionaire already. It's one of the greatest feelings you could ever have. So look, a few months later, we launched our first product and straight away, I had even more conviction. This is going to work. Like we're going to, maybe it wasn't this exact product that would work. And eventually we did change that to something else. But the business model was so clear. I was kind of back to my roots of just buying and selling things, which really got me excited. And I could just see a clear path to the kind of seven or eight figures, like I said. And look, I'm not saying that Amazon FBA is the answer for you. What I'm saying is you need to be open to different ideas. For me, Amazon FBA was a thing that it turns out I was pretty good at, right? I was probably not pretty good at it. I'm, I'm really good at it. I'm not being kind of ashamed to say. We're good at doing it and we're good at teaching it. And now we have two businesses in that space. And if you are interested in Amazon FBA, obviously, quick plug, Honest FBA is our community. I think it's probably the best place to learn it on the internet. So feel free to check that out down below. So to kind of fast forward now and, and summarize this, in my experience, right, I went in the space of four years from really resigning myself to a an average life where I could maybe earn 100,000, 200,000 a year to now owning two seven-figure businesses in the space of four years. And look, now, to be candid, I, I don't earn 14,000 pounds a year, um, probably got a path to earn 14,000 pounds a week, maybe even 14,000 pounds per day when we get to the point of selling our brand. And many of you guys that watch this channel, we're not saying this to be, or I'm not saying this rather, to, to brag in any way at all. I wanted to say this to give people something to think about and hopefully to inspire a couple of people to make changes because it sounds cheesy, but you can really just change the path of your life so quickly. Four years has absolutely flown by. And now my ambition is completely back. I can see two seven-figure businesses that could turn into easily into eight-figure businesses. It's given me massive drive and allowing myself to consume that content, obviously with a bit of luck as well, right? COVID was a massive stroke of luck for me, but recognizing, oh shit, here's the thing that I'm good at and absolutely going for it. Do that as well, right? Just give it a go. Don't resign yourself to a life that you're not really that content with. Because if you had that fire, you can get it back.